Hey pilots, Drain Man here and today I have got a very special video. In today's video we are checking out the Fly Color X Tower 2. This is version 2 to a version 1 which was an F4 stack. This is the X Tower 2 which is an F760 amp stack and that is a flight controller ESC combo and this thing is packed with features. I am very excited to check this out. You guys are in for a real treat and if you don't have one of these in one of your builds you are definitely missing out. Let's go! Alright, let's go ahead and dive in. So what comes inside of the X Tower 2 and let's take a peek at it. Oh wow. Alright, so right off the top we have a nice fly color sticker and that's their little logo guy if you'll see here. That looks familiar now, don't it? Yes it does. Alright, we're going to set that off to the side and then under the foam, oh wow. Wow, look at that. Oh. That is gorgeous. Look at this thing. Oh my goodness. All right. Let's not get too much into it just yet. We're going to set it aside. We'll, we'll put it right here next to our sticker. So we've got some more foam, which is nice. It's nice to see that it is packaged nicely. But more importantly, what features does it have and what does it come with? So you'll see right here we've got our instructions and... And then under that, we have a little baggie of goodies. So if I pour these out, you'll see that we've got our XT60 lead. And that's nice to see because without that, you can't wire up your ESC. Nowadays, it's pretty standard for a ESC or stack to come with an XT60 plug. Next up, we've got some plugs. We've got one, two, three, and four of these small little three wire plugs. I'm not sure what that's for, but I'm sure we'll find out here shortly. And then you've got two little tiny pieces of heat shrink and a capacitor. Now the capacitor is a Rubicon and it is a 35 volt 560 microfarads. And that is what this heat shrink is for. Watch this. If I slide this over here, I can then take this one and slide it over there. Boom. Now what you'll do obviously is you'll cut this to the correct length and then you can heat shrink so nothing touches and you don't short anything out. You also get one more connector and that is your plug and what this does is this makes connecting your flight controller and ESC so easy. All you have to do is plug it in here and then you loop this around and plug it in here and then you're done. She's all set. So diving right in, the first thing you're gonna notice is that this thing is gorgeous. It comes in a very cool purple color and that is the fly color signature, right? Who else do you know that has purple flight controllers, purple ESCs, and that's exactly what you see here. And that is absolutely cool and it's definitely original. Now also what they've upgraded since the X Tower one is we went from USB to type C and that is much better much faster and there's no orientation you can plug it in upside down forward whatever works for you and we're seeing this a lot the more and more flight controllers we look at the more we see that they're all moving to type C so the next thing you're going to notice is right here we have our microcontroller and that is a nice F7 that is not an F405, that is a F722. Also, you're seeing plenty of capacitors on board. Look, they're all over the place. And if we flip this guy over, the ESC is packed with a lot of ceramic capacitors as well. And right on top, I know that you guys are seeing this. This is a squiggly line of trace. And what that actually is, if you combine that, so you've got this right here combined with this IC right here, and that gives us Bluetooth. Yes, Bluetooth. And I know that's no surprise, especially for the Speedy B adapter, guys. You guys are seeing this all the time. But if you like Bluetooth, I mean, it's great to have. You put Betaflight on your phone, and then when you're out in the field, there's no tinkering or messing around. You just connect with the click of a button, no wires, no plugging in, doesn't get better than that. 
All right, so before we get into our pinout, I want to take note of this little arrow right here, and this is the direction in which your gyro is facing, which is forward, right? So that way, when you put your, your flight controller in your drone and you lean forward or lean backwards, left, right, it actually means something to the firmware and it means something to the microcontroller. That way it knows what orientation it's in. Now, while we're talking about the arrow, so the arrow's headed that way, I want to point out something that I think is pretty big. And what that is, is you're going to notice right here on the board that the board is actually protruded right here and it's actually recessed right here. And the reason for that is that that allows more space up here in the front, right? So there's your arrow going that way, and that, that would be the front, and the front is where you would generally put your camera. And what that's doing is that's allowing more space for your camera. I'm not sure how many times you've put your camera in and you go to tilt back to get your angle, and you're smacking your stack. Well, not with this guy. They've taken that extra step to buy you those couple extra millimeters, but you did not lose that real estate on the board. They just extended it out this way, and then they put some through-hole pads and some nice, big, healthy, flat pads right there. I do want to point this out, and this right here is a wind bond chip, and what that is is that's onboard flash. If you're not sure what that is, basically it's just an onboard version of having an SD card slot where you can put your logging for all of your black box data and things like that. All right, so with DJI and Acro Pilots and things like that, we're seeing less and less of the barometers being on board. I mean, why put them, right? Not many people are using them. I know that I don't ever use them. I don't, I, I might have possibly never used one. I mean, maybe once or twice for a video for you guys, but I don't really use it. But if you want it and you need it or you're interested or maybe you don't need it, but you want to have it in case you do need it, well, right here on the fly color board, you'll notice there's a barometer. So right here, you're going to notice is your boot button. You got a nice button hanging off the edge. That way, if this is built into your quad, you're not sticking a screwdriver or a pair of tweezers or something up in there, <clears throat> stabbing your board, you can reach it right off the edge. I do like when they do that. All right, so next up, heading in this direction, you've got two pads right here that are very important. I did a review of the TransTech F7 board. If you're interested, I'll link that video for you. But on that board, there is nowhere to put the buzzer. That is right. These two pads are your buzzer minus and your buzzer positive. You got to have those if you're running a buzzer. All right, now heading down this side, what you're going to notice is that your connector is right here, and right here is your entire connector broken out. Now, if you've never flown the X Tower or you did not have the X Tower 1, then you wouldn't know, but the X Tower 1 actually had no pads at all. I, I, I don't even think it had one pad. And the entire board was designed to be very, very plug and play. It came with a boatload of plugs, a plug for every camera, every uh, VTX, whatever you're trying to connect, there was a plug. You just plugged it in, plugged it in, and then they even gave you a plug that had solder pads on the other end in case you did want to solder something, but not on the board. So it's very nice to see that. You still got some plugs on here if you want them, but we are and we do have the capability to just solder everything right up. So although this plug is right here and the pinout of this plug is matching, we are able to go ahead and say this is our ground. And then right after your ground, you've got your VBAT in, which is your main power source. So then you've got your motors, four, three, two, and one. And then just under that, you've got your current. Whenever you see CRT or CRNT, that is your current sensing. Now right off in front of that, you're gonna notice there's one more more big healthy pad right there and that pad is your camera control that is where you'll connect your OSD if you want to go ahead and wire up your OSD not all cameras have that so here's what we got here we've got a ground ground and then UART 5 which consists of TX5 and RX5 and then right here on the right you've got a 5 volt 10 volt your camera and your VTX and what you're going to notice is those are in the front of the board. So you're not going to be uh, wiring up your camera in the front of the drone and then 
you know, connecting it in the back. It's not like that. They've laid it out properly, connecting the camera in the front and actually installing it in the front of the drone. These are through holes, so if you wanted to take your wire and then you just grab it like yay and then what you would do is you would just drop it into the hole and then put a little bead of solder on it it will literally never come out so those are nice they're they're a tad bit stronger than just having a flat pad okay now down here we've got another uart that is tx6 right here rx6 right here another five volt and a ground how nice is that? So here we are, we're just getting started and we've already got two UARTs, five and six. So now over on this side, you've got your RSSI, you've got your ground, you've got five volts, RX1 and TX1, another UART. So now before we jump up into the flat pads, which are these guys right here, I do wanna mention one thing about this pad right here, will actually power up when you plug in your type USB. So when you plug this in, this pad will begin to have voltage, this five volts right here. All right, so here we go. Moving on to up here, we have TX3, we have RX3, ground 3.3 and five volts. Now we did blow over it and we really didn't talk about it, but you do have a 10 volt pad back here. That right there is absolutely awesome. We, all right, so to move on to the next step, we need to go ahead and disassemble. Before we do, I do want to point out that, that the flight controller is soft-mounted, ESC is soft-mounted, and then not to uh, rub it in your face, but there is a O-ring right here in between the two. So we are dampened to the max, and that is also very, very sweet. All right, there we go. We've got all four nylon nuts. They are off and ready to go. We can go ahead and separate these two. We're going to set the ESC to the side for a second. And look at this. This thing is gorgeous from the top to the bottom. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the bottom of this guy. Now, now we know what these plugs are for. You've got one, two, three, and four, and that is what these are for. If you remember these, uh, when we opened our box, we saw that there was four of these plugs, and what are they for, you might ask? Well, look at that. I just plug that in, and now I can wire up LEDs. And if your LEDs come with plugs, you don't even need these. They just gave you these so you can have them. So what you'll do is you'll actually go into Betaflight, and you'll go to the LED section, and you will program the hell out of those things. Betaflight LEDs have tons and tons and tons of options. Trust me when I say this, you can do all kinds of amazing stuff with the Betaflight LED tab inside of the configurator. If you don't believe me, go watch the video. I've got an LED video. I show you everything under the sun that you need to know to learn and get your LEDs popping. All right, so moving on real quick, let's finish up the pinout here. You're gonna see right here something very, very cool. And what that is, is your DJI wiring up capabilities right here. You've got RX1, ground, RX2, TX2, ground, and a 10 volt. That's right, you can connect DJI to this board seamlessly and have a great flying experience. You can fly HD. All right, these are through holes, so that means that these pads are exactly identical as to the ones on top, and the same is true for over here. These are through hole. That means whatever you see on this side is exactly what we saw on this side, and I already went over that pinout. So if you're interested in what these will be connected to, just flip the board over and it's exactly the same, all right? So now looking on the back side of this board, we've got one, two, three big inductors. We've got a nice Betaflight OSD chip. This is the standard chip that everybody's using. You've got a nice crystal resonator right here. That's nice to see. You've got your filtration. That's very, very nice. I mean, this board is nice. And you might notice the little bit of shine that it has. Can you see that? Yeah, that's right. They can formal coated this for you as well. So if you get a little bit of moisture or maybe you're going from a cool house to a humid outside like we do here in Florida sometimes, you don't have to worry. This thing has got a little bit of protection on it ready 
ready to go. I think we already talked about your main plug right here. This is where you plug your big connector to and it will drop down and feed your ESC. Well, the other way around. What I notice right away is these pads are actually much shorter because the original X Tower, this came out way out here and then came all the way back. And what that was was a recipe for you to not have enough space or if you hung it out the side, now you've got a mess on your hands because, I mean, simply that thing is just hanging out, you know, half an inch or whatever. So I'm glad that they shorted that up for us a little bit. And you can also see the holes. These little holes right here are to allow for your solder to stick better. You've got a better flow of current. These holes are just good to see. They took the time to put those in for you. But Drain Man, there's two big holes. Yes, that is right. There is two big holes. And I'm going to show you what that's for. Watch and learn. So what you'll do is you will just slide that right in. Huh? Look at that. And you're not going to tell me those aren't the exact perfect distance apart that they didn't plan for this to happen like that. So you can actually put that just like that if you want. If this is mounted in your drone and hanging out the side. Uh, if you don't have the space because, I don't know, maybe your top plate's in the way. Just come up whatever amount that you need and then tilt forward and boom. Look at that. Now you do want to use the heat shrink that they sent with it. Solder it up, put your heat shrink on, and then from this side you'll just clip the difference and put a little bloop of solder on top and you're all set. Now you're going to notice on the top of here for each motor you've got your very own STM32 F0 microcontroller. That is very, very nice. You've got your FET drivers and you've got your FETs all on here ready to go and looking good. If we flip this over, you're going to see a ton, I mean a ton of filtration. That is nice. Guys, we want to see this, especially what if you break a cap off? Is it going to continue to work? I don't know. That's a good question. That might be a video for another day. All right, and on the bottom, circling all the way around, look at all your fetch, just gorgeous. And then you've got your center filled. You got a couple regulators and then tons of capacitors. And then, of course, which everybody needs, you've got your shunt resistor right there, which is packing a punch and uh, sensing your current for you. And then lastly, you've got your connector, which this does loop up to the flight controller and make all of your connections for you easy as pie. One thing they did not do on this is they did not lay out the pad. So if you do need to wire this up, you broke the connector, whatever, you won't be able to solder down to your ESC. You will be able to solder up to your flight controller, but unfortunately you won't have that option. But it is on the bottom, it is compact, it is out of the way, you've got absolutely no reason at all to break this. All right, pilots, that is going to do it for the X Tower 2 flight controller ESC combo review. We've checked it out. We went over the pin out. This thing is sweet. If you do not have one of these, you need to get one. If you have never tried the original X Tower 1, then you're already slacking as it is. You need to get your hands on one of these. I'll drop a link for you down in the video description. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you on the next one.